Good morning and welcome to another Sunday Shine. My name is Jay and I'm extra pumped today because it is officially the first day of my favorite season. Right, Daryl? Oh, I love it. Today is the first day of summer. I'm so excited. I love these sunny days, these long days. Jay and I have been talking about it when it's like, what, 9, 9.30 and it's still sunny out? Woo, that's a blast. Hey, we got some great things that we want to share with you today. We also want you to be uh, just all over all of our different pages. We got the chapel.com slash shine. There's so many great resources on there that we want you to see and be a part of. Every week, we load that up with new things for you. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can grab different content throughout the week on there. We're always posting different things, so we want you to be in the loop. Also, parent Facebook page. We're always putting up different stuff for parents on there, so check out click up and be a part of that Facebook group right on there. Jay, what else do we have going on? We got some games or anything else That's today? That's right. It would not be a Shine Sunday without a game or an activity. And here's the thing. You can learn how to do this or be reminded or refresh your memory by going to thechapel.com slash shine. We also want you to utilize the parent Facebook page to share this stuff, what you record in your homes, to share that in our Facebook page. But uh, today we've got Dish It Up. Now, I'm Italian, so I like to sauce it up, but this one's called Dish It Up, and it's from one of our leaders, Julie, and her sisters. So check it out as she explains how to engage in this activity. Hey, Shine family. It's Julie here with my sisters, Christine and Denise, and we're here to give you guys a challenge. It's called Dish It Up. And the goal is to use foods from the back of your cupboards or leftovers that you never thought you'd use to make a random meal. And you'll also need a paper and a pen to list the steps and ingredients. Let's get creative. Time to get started. Well, great. not your average oatmeal. That looks great. I don't would know what's in there. I don't, I don't even, there are so many different things, but I would try it. I love to eat all kinds of random wild things, all of right. course. Would you try it? Uh, I'm not so sure. Oh, man. I'm you know, so a tummy sure ache that... a couple hours later, it might still be worth it just to get that and try it. I don't know that my palate can handle such a Dude. spectrum of flavors, but here's the deal. Make your own meal, list your own recipe, make it, film yourself doing it, and also maybe some of you would dare to eat what your creation is. Yes. Uh, but that is the Dish It Up challenge or activity, and you can find that at thechapel.com slash shine. We got some music today, Daryl. You oh, excited for that? I'm excited. I love Man, it. I love when I'll... we can just sit and worship and mu worship music. Yeah, that's right. We got Ava. She's going to be leading us in a song. So, Ava, you can take it away.
Thanks so much, Ava, and welcome back, everybody. Today, we're talking about how disciples have trust, and a reminder that a disciple is someone who daily follows Jesus and compels others to do the same. So I'm so excited to hear from our friends about how disciples have trust. And first, we're going to hear from Megan. She's a seventh grader at Grand Island, and she plays the piano. Let's hear what she has to say. Hi, my name is Megan, and I am from the Niagara Falls campus. Today I will be reading Psalms 56, verse three through four. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid, what can mere mortals do to me? I think this means that when you're afraid, you can always turn towards God to help you push through. That's so true, and in case you missed it, Megan just read Psalms 56, three through four, and reminded us that we can always turn, turn towards God when we're afraid, and he will help us push through. We just have to trust him. Up next, we have Abby. She's a fifth grader at Harris Hill, and she just earned her brown belt in karate, which is super cool. She's gonna read Psalms three, five. Take it away, Abby. Hi, my name is Abby Corrado, and I am from the Cross Point campus. The verse I'll be reading to you today is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This verse means to me that you need to trust in God more than you trust in yourself or anybody else because he knows all the answers. For example, sometimes we believe that we have all the answers in life, but God is the only answer that we need. That's so true. Just like Abby said, we need to trust God above all else because God has all the answers. And we don't know what tomorrow brings or the day after that, but God does. So we just need to trust him, even though it might be difficult, but trusting him through all of that, which is so awesome. So thank you for sharing, Abby. Lastly, we have my friend Jeremy, who's gonna be tuning in to tell us more about how disciples have trust. Hey, Jeremy, how are you doing? Hey, Sam, I'm good. Hey, Shine family, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, it's summer, super exciting. Uh, warm weather is finally here, and that's awesome. So today we're talking about trust, that disciples have trust. And I think when I think of trust, I think of, you know, how I would trust people with secret information or I trust them with important things. You know, when I was in middle school, I had a friend who, uh, he's my best friend, and I trusted him with a secret. Uh, and, and I knew that he wouldn't share it with anyone because he was trustworthy. I trusted him. You know, we'll trust our parents or we'll trust our siblings maybe with certain things. You know, we trust that our parents have our best for us. And so this idea of trust is all over the place. Uh, we see it in our own lives. But when we talk about disciples have trust, we mean that we trust God. We trust God with everything. Even when times are bad or when, when we're going through a rough season or, or things don't look great, we trust God. Jesus talks about this, about why do we trust God in, in Matthew chapter 6, and it's found in verse 25 through 34, and, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase this a little bit, but, but he's talking about, hey, why, why are you worrying about what you're going to eat or what, or what you're going to wear? And then he says these things, consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? And then he continues and says, Look at the wild flowers of the field growing. They don't labor, they don't spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? God's saying, hey, look at you don't have to worry about those things. How much more does God love us than flowers? or birds, and yet he provides for them. And so sometimes we might feel fearful in our lives, and, and, and we might not have fully trust that everything's going to be okay, but we see here that Jesus says, hey, trust God. God has your best for you. He's got a plan for you. He knows what's best for you. I'm reminded of one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible, Romans 8, 28, where it says this, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. God's got good in mind for us. All things will work out for good. We just have to trust God, trust that he knows. Like Abby was saying, trust that he knows more than we know. He, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He knows everything. We don't know everything. 
But here's the other piece of trust, and this is what I'm going to end with. To trust someone, you have to really know them, right? You're not going to trust someone that you just met with, with an important secret, right? You're going to trust somebody that you've known for a while, someone that you, that you have a relationship with. In the same way, for us to truly trust God, we have to know him. We have to understand the truth of what he says in his word and trust that that word is true fully. And so today, when we talk about what does it mean for a disciple to have trust, we mean that they know God and they believe what God says is true in his word and that his, his plans are for our good. Even when it might not seem like it in the moment, we trust God that he will work all things for good for us. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. What a great word this morning on trust. And that is absolutely a trait of a disciple. And that's what we long uh, to be ourselves here at the chapel. That's what we hope for you as our students. So, uh, Daryl, I want to give people a few reminders uh, before we cut them loose. Yeah, for sure. Um, as we've talked about, we want you to be connected all throughout the week with us. So if that means subscribing to our YouTube channel, get on that. We want you to be on that parent Facebook group. Uh, that way you can post different stuff from the games that you guys have been doing. We want to see those. Maybe we can feature those uh, in different ways throughout our social media. And then that way you can get the instructions, be it on that Facebook group or the chapel.com slash shine. So many great resources in there. We want you guys to be involved. And we are so thankful that you guys are watching with us and you're staying throughout all this different time watching online through us on our YouTube page or just straight up after the service here on Sunday mornings. Happy it's summer. It's the first day. Jay, what are you going to do for the first day of summer? Man, I think I'm going to go for a nice bike ride. Dude, I love bike rides. And get some ice cream, perhaps uh, peanut butter s'mores. Ooh, that's a great so, ice cream. I love right. Hibbert's. I love ice cream. Summer's here. All right, Shine, we love you. Thank you so much. Thechapel.com slash Shine. All the resources, including some community group or discussion yes. questions that you can go through as a family that are going to talk uh, right on and focus in on trust. But thank you for another Sunday Shine. And we... We'll see you next week. Grace and peace.